Welcome to Altium Designer 17 Advanced PCB Course. This module will cover the various methods for rerouting of existing PCB traces. Altium Designer has a nice feature for removing redundant loops in traces called loop removal. Looking at the PCB preferences under the Interactive Routing window, there is a checkbox for automatically remove loops. Leaving this checked allows for the auto-delete of extra trace loops. To see this in action, let's start an interactive route and click on the track, starting and stopping like so. Now the old tracks are deleted automatically. What if you want additional loops on a particular net? Open the PCB panel and select that net. Double-clicking on it brings up the Net Editor window. Unchecking the Remove Loops checkbox will disable auto loop removal for this net. Now when we add additional tracks to an existing route for this net, they all remain. Note enabling or disabling loop removal does not revisit all of the existing tracks in the PCB. It is only when the particular track is changed that the loop removal comes into play. What if only temporarily you want to disable loop removal? While in the midst of routing, hit the Tab key. Now in the pop-up window, clear the Auto Loop Removal box. From now on, and this is important, Auto Loop Removal is disabled. To re-enable it, either go back to the PCB Preferences window, or while routing another track, hit the Tab key and recheck the box to enable the loop removal. What if there are a series of tracks that are routed, but they're in the way of additional planned routes? It is possible to move them as a group in Altium. First select the group using the Edit Select Line Method or ESL shortcut key, and then move the mouse over one of the select tracks and left click, hold, and move. You do not want the mouse to be in the middle segment or on an end segment, but somewhere else on that track. Using ESL to select multiple lines can be extended by hitting the Tab key. This changes the selection mode as you can see here with multiple tab key inputs. The first tab selects the connected tracks. The next tab selects all of the connected copper. This can be a fast way to select a group of routed nets for deletion or for glossing. Glossing cleans up the selected tracks and can be helpful when removing unneeded jogs and segments in the routed tracks. To run the gloss engine on selected nets, either hit the shortcut key combination of Ctrl-Alt-G or access the command from the route pull-down menu. When routing or moving a track on the PCB, the mode of routing can be changed by using the Shift-R shortcut key. Notice hitting the Shift-R repeatedly, the mode changes in the status area. Oftentimes, when trying to select a group of objects, in this case the top-level tracks, using ESL will capture any track on the other layers in the PCB. To limit the scope of the ESL selection, hit the Shift-S shortcut key to move to single-layer viewing mode. Now only the layer highlighted can be selected. There are often time routes that are critical either in placement for timing or noise related concerns. These tracks can be locked by selecting the net in the PCB panel, selecting all of the tracks, and then opening up the properties window and checking the locked checkbox. Or you could open up the inspector panel and checking the lock checkbox for those selected tracks. Likewise, a segment could also be locked by double clicking on it and setting its lock checkbox. If you have a partially routed design and need to add components into an area where there are a number of pre-existing routes, one way to provide room is to use the Track Slicing feature. To access the Track Slicing tool, use the Edit pull-down menu and select Slice Tracks. Now running the mouse over the tracks, we see the cutting action. At this point, the group of tracks and or their associated components could be moved. During the routing of a net, I sometimes get into a place where I need to backtrack. To remove the last place trace, simply hit the backspace key. Continuing to hit the backspace key will sequentially remove the added tracks, starting with the most recent and progressing backwards. This saves time as it removes the undesired tracks and keeps us in the routing mode. This completes the instruction on rerouting where we covered a number of techniques and tools for modifying the existing routing on a PCB. Please do the exercise on rerouting.